Hello, brothers and sisters. Raven here. Today on Homestead Heretics, I am just going to discuss a very particular side of the document we have been going through from Homestead Heritage. It is called Faith or Self-Pity. But as we've been going through this, what we see this document's all about is just trying to make you constantly judge yourself, come against yourself, see yourself as the issue. And a couple topics have come up as I've been going through this. And today I want to kind of focus on a connection between two of these topics that I haven't really pointed out yet. And I really want to focus on this because this is not just one of the major issues of what they teach, if not the issue of what they teach, but this is also going to show a bit more of the issue that makes them go down the road they're down. One thing I've already talked about is how they do such a dichotomy of everything. They always go one extreme or another. Today we're going to see a little bit of why they do that, what pushes them to do that, and then also we're going to connect that with something else they talk about. To start off, if you remember, we've already gone through quotes from pages 8 and 12, where 8 says this, Practically all problems in living for God stem from the failure to keep that pledge, to keep that man of sin crucified. And on page 12 it said, So our continuous prayer to God should be that he would help us to humble ourselves unto death. Help us bring forth an acceptable sacrifice that comes not from our sinful nature, but from the death of that already dying nature. If our sacrifice doesn't come forth from the death of that nature, then like Cain, we will begin first to nurture envy and bitterness. And what we saw looking at those quotes is how they're really trying to make you a sacrifice that makes it so that Jesus' sacrifice wasn't enough. We need another sacrifice. I want to propose this comes out of their push for a dichotomy. To start off, I'm going to read a portion that comes at the end of page 5 of this document. Now it's going to start off a little... It might feel a little hard to follow simply because there's nothing there. It's empty. So at the start of this, I'm just going to read it so you get the idea of what they're saying. But don't try to make sense out of it because there's nothing there. It's being very vague, very hollow, and there's not much you're going to get from it. But the later part is what I want to get at. So in paragraph, they start saying this. If someone plays such games of self-pity long enough... Eventually, he can cross a line where a return to God becomes extremely difficult. Instead of deciding to follow Jesus, he may then someday make a decision that precludes ever following him again. To focus the mind and emotions on how pitiful we are, how victimized we are, how hopeless everything is, ultimately leads to a final decision that says, I am not guilty, I am only pitiful. When someone becomes totally and absolutely convinced of that, he will have separated himself from hope. He will truly become, of all men, the most to be pitied, because he will have all but eradicated hope from his life. So as you can see in this, this is trying to show that idea of pity, or as we talked about before, that they've mentioned in other places of this document, the idea of being a victim. And what it's trying to claim here and imply at the same time is that if you are not taking full responsibility for everything that's bad and you make yourself a victim or have pity in any way, it's going to lead to you having pity and victimhood in everything and you're never going to take responsibility for anything so the way they see it is that either you take the far side one full end where you are guilty of everything but if you try to put victimhood on 
anything, it's going to make you go to the opposite end of the spectrum. This comes, obviously, out of bad assumption because they've seen it happen. They've probably seen people do this or they take victimhood for something and immediately put that on everything because it's easier. It's an easy way out. The problem is, just because this happens to multiple people doesn't mean the opposite end is going to make it so you never go down that road. And it also doesn't mean that even if the opposite end does keep you from going down that road, that the opposite end is the truth. But that's the way they treat it. That's where this is coming from. It's that kind of thought process where they see the wrong of one extreme, but they ignore the problems and falsehoods in the other extreme so that they can hold to that to make themselves feel absolutely confident and certain they will not ever start going down to the opposite extreme. That's where this comes from. That's the kind of thinking that leads down this road, which is coming out of that seeking of perfection. They want an extreme that doesn't belong in this world. That doesn't happen here. What they don't realize is they themselves are admitting this perfection cannot happen when they treat it as though any little bit of victimhood means you're going to be drawn to that opposite end. They are revealing the impossibility of the very thing they're seeking. It's a very twisted, muddy way of reasoning through this. It doesn't work. But that's where this comes from. That's where this is starting from. It's wanting to build this community, build this congregation, church, whatever you want to call it, to a place where nobody's going to fall away. Nobody's going to fail. Nobody's going to be drawn to the wrong side. And by that, they become extremist. Now, this is what leads to the biggest issue. Beginning of page seven, it says this. While this sacrifice brought dominion over sin in order to appropriate this power in our own lives, it's talking about Jesus, what he did. We must die to sin ourselves so that we can present the acceptable sacrifice to him. This is going right back to the way they treat it as though Jesus was an example to us. Or as they say in their document, he presented something to us instead of representing us. And so we need to do what he was an example of. But no, he was the sacrifice. But they want us to make a sacrifice. Why? It's because they need to go to that extreme. They can't let Jesus take the punishment. They can't let him make the sacrifice if they're going to take complete guilt of everything and never have any pity. That's why they can't let it be about faith. It's got to be about works. It can't be about his sacrifice. It has to be about ours. Because that would be the first step and going down that road of showing pity. As it says in the dictionary, pity is sympathetic or kindly sorrow evoked by the suffering, distress, or misfortune of another, often leading one to give relief or aid, to show mercy. What Jesus did. He had pity on us, and they don't want you to see that. Because as we just saw, they stated, any little pity, and you're going to go to the other extreme. That's the way they reason through this. That's the way they're thinking. And to follow that reasoning and really hold to it, 
they actually have to make it where Jesus' sacrifice isn't enough. Where he didn't pay the price. Because they need you to pay the price. Another thing that is stated in this document is on page 10, where it says, So true healing can only come when the individual recognizes that the problem, comma, no matter what its source, comma, takes root because of his own edemic character. First they say, no matter what the source. Then they say it's because of your own edemic nature. So no matter what the source, here's the source. They're contradicting themselves in this statement. They're saying no matter where this comes from, make it come from you. They're really forcing this to where you take the guilt of everything in your own mind and heart. You see yourself as the culprit of everything. And know what this does. They keep talking about, you know, being rid of yourself, getting rid of yourself, become part of the body, all that stuff. But the ironic thing of this, they are so focused on sin, on error. As we've seen in other places, they don't just forgive people of things. That doesn't happen. The sin is always there. The sin is always an issue. They don't let your past sins be forgiven. They hold on to record of it. They bring it up if you make another mistake. They don't accept true forgiveness. And it's always your fault. You're always guilty. You, 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 you. Ultimately, they're making everybody extremely self-centered. Not selfish. Self-centered. Because all of their focus is on themselves in how much they hate themselves. That's what this is about. Self-centeredness. And that's why it has so little to do with Christ. That's why they need the solution to be the body. Not him. Because the one thing you're never going to get rid of is yourself. They're going to do what they do to play mind games to make you sort of think that way, try to think you are now the body, you are now Christ, you're not yourself. But no, you're being yourself. And there's no way of getting around that. Because you exist. He created you. You're you. Even when you die to self, you're born again. There's no way out of it. So what do they do? They make you hate yourself. They make all that self-centeredness that they're pushing, that they're forcing on you, sound less selfish because it's a matter of self-hatred. And it all comes from that extremist view. That way, you have to stick to one extreme to prevent any failures, any problems, any issues, to keep everything perfect. That perfection that they're not seeking, they're not hoping for, they're forcing is the problem. Because it doesn't come from us. It comes from him. But they're making it so that your salvation doesn't come from him. That's all this is. It's just a huge conundrum. This is a big paradox. They are fighting themselves and they don't realize it. All of the false teachings, all of the falsehoods in it, all come down to being the issue they are because they've led down this road where Jesus is not truly God. Jesus 
did not pay for our sins. We pay for our sins. Those three things are what makes their teaching not Christianity. Those three things are what make the other issues come in. Because of their extreme view, they can't have Jesus pay the price. That's the problem. That's the whole problem with this. That's why the extremes are so dangerous. Because you're so worried about the faults you can make, about the errors you can make, about how you can go down the wrong road, that your views become all about avoiding that instead of being all about finding the truth about finding salvation, about finding the Lord, about learning who he truly is. Instead, it's about keeping you where you want to be and thus following your own will. See the paradox? That's why this doesn't work. They're making themselves so imperfect that they get nothing right. And yet, within their teaching... They want to be absolutely perfect. It's those two extremes within their own view. On one side of it, they try to make you look absolutely perfect. And on the other, they make you absolutely guilty of everything. The side that makes you perfect, or so they say, is the side that they try to make look like it's not you. But that's an illusion. That's brainwashing. That's a mind game. It's why when you go to a place like this, you have to rely on the leadership. Because you can't find the answers yourself because the whole thought process, the whole basis of this is so contrary to itself. You can't come to answers through your own reasoning. So you have to go to the leaders who taught you these things. You have to put your faith in them. As they say at the start of page five, it says, So in his heart, he accuses God. He accuses God's word. He accuses God's authority in the church. It is just put God, the word of God, and the authority of his church on the same level. Which really, in this case, means the authority of Homestead Heritage. That's how this works. That's what this is all about. That's why it's a cult. And that's why it's so hard to get people out. They didn't come to these conclusions through reasoning. The problem is, they put their faith in these men and their teachings instead of in Christ. They put their faith in their own sacrifices instead of in Christ. They put their faith in their own death instead of in his death and resurrection. Their faith is in the wrong place. That's the issue. There's no reasoning involved in this. There's no really profound words of wisdom that are drawing the people into this. No, it's this delusion of this perfect society, of this perfection, of this place where they finally have fully paid all the price. And they are no longer themselves. They are now part of this perfect body. It's getting their faith in Christ that is so necessary. It's called faith or self-pity. Faith or self-pity can work because faith is what you need. And when you have faith, you receive his pity. You don't need self-pity. But they try to make all pity look bad. As we saw at the end of the document, they try to even keep others from showing their pity, including God. And it all comes from that extremist view that takes the power away from Christ. I'll see you guys next time. 
God bless.